Good morning. How's everyone doing this morning? My name is Hal. This is Quail Studios Guitar. Glad to have you here. Good morning, Dean. Oh, feels like I got something in my eye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about the secrets of tuning your guitar. And uh, I've got a couple different camera angles we're going to be working with here when uh, I put my tuner on. And uh, I've got my guitar tuned up really well. Pretty well. Sounds good. <laughs> Now let's change the tuning on it. I don't know if you've ever had this trouble, or here it goes. Playing the same thing I did in the beginning. Okay, it's definitely out of tune. So when I put on new strings, a lot of times, uh, you know, you're going to have terrible tuning, and so you got to tune it up. Well, the thing I like to do is use a tuner, and uh, I've got a TC Electronic tuner here. It's called a Polytune, but there's a Unitune, which I like a lot. It's uh, less expensive than the Polytune. These are great. I'm, I'm not being paid by them to tell you this, by the way, but this is metal that never breaks. I love it. Um, the Unitune is about as expensive as any other clip-on tuner. The Polytune is like twice as expensive, like fifty dollars or something but the unitune is like 25 or something anyway I'd get the unitune if I were gonna get a tuner right this second let's move this camera down and I'll show you what I'm doing all right here we go so you can see that gosh I'm all the way down on a D I'm gonna tune it up D sharp this one only does sharps you'll see right there there's a D and then there's a little dot. That means sharp. This one only tells you sharps. It doesn't say anything about flats. There's E. Since I'm so far out of tune, then I'm just going to get it in the ballpark. Here's my A string. Oh, it's on G, G sharp, going up to A. That's close enough. C, okay, C sharp, going up to D. F. Oh, there's G. We'll leave it there. A going up to B. D sharp going up to E. And there we are. Thank you, Dean, for letting me know that it sounds great. Okay, you'll notice that, I don't know if you noticed this, but when I tune this up a little earlier, this was in tune. Now that I tune my other strings, now the string is flat again. So I'm going to tune it again. So anytime you're very out of tune, you need to tune more than one time. That will really help. That was a little too high. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I'm doing here in just a second, but I'm just going to do this really quick. Let me look at it myself. I can see a little bit better when it's not just looking at the camera. a little high. Okay, there we go. Now, you'll see that when it's green, it's in tune. Now, if it's a little bit red on the bottom side, on this side, on the left side, that's probably okay. A. That needs to be a little higher. Since this is a video about tuning, I'm not going to skip over the tuning part. Let's do that 
intro thing again. There we go. Okay, now, maybe you'd want to see me play that. pretty good. There's a couple of little things that I'm not really happy with, but uh, let's generally show you what's going on with the tuning. I don't know if you know this or not, but almost every, in fact, every student that I've ever told this to, they were always shocked. And here, this is what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to take this low E string. I'm in tune. I'm going to take it down so that it basically it's not playing. I'll go a little bit farther so it doesn't flop too much. But basically, Almost all the tension is off of it. Now let's watch this. Now we're going to go back and show you the, the, other, the other strings. I didn't touch the other strings. The A string, it's sharp. The D string is sharp. The, D st the G string is not quite so sharp, a little sharp. B string is sharp. E string, it's, is it in tune? Let me look at it. It's basically in tune, but all the other strings went sharp. Do you know why? <laughs> and so this low E, it's, it's just flopping around. It's because when the tuning, when the tension is off one of the strings, especially this low E string, it has about 25 pounds, 26, 27 pounds tension, something like that, that it's pulling on your neck, and it's pulling this way. Well, when you loosen it, the, the neck moves back like this, slightly, and it tightens the other strings, and that's why you get this, like that A string. It's out of tune. So what do you do? Well, watch what happens when I tune my string back up. D sharp, E. Oh, my tuner goes off after three minutes if I... I like that about that tuner. It's, uh, it's like, you're not using your tuner. Let's turn it off. It saves my battery. There it is, it's in tune. Now let's check the A string. It's in tune. Oh, it's a little bit flat. Just a hair. D string's in tune. G string's basically in tune. B string's in tune. E string is in tune. Everything is back in tune. And the only thing I did was I loosened the E string. The other strings went sharp. I tightened it back up. The neck moved up a little bit again this way. Everything went back in tune. No problem. Bet you didn't know that before. So whenever you have a string, uh, a guitar that's completely out of tune like that, you need to tune it not one time but several times. That's important. If you break a string, then everything else is going to go out of tune. Uh, maybe you've seen videos or heard of people, you know, they're playing along and they break a string and then they keep playing. Um, if it's a high string, like an E string or a B string or a G string, um, it may not make quite as much difference. Um, but still, you sometimes have to compensate for the problems that there are when a string breaks because the tension will be relaxed, the guitar neck will move back just slightly, and everything will go a little bit out of tune. You can make it work, but it's not desirable at all. Okay, so a couple of other things. When I'm tuning, you'll notice, uh, like, oh, let's, should we get a different guitar out? Maybe we could. I didn't plan that, but uh, no, let's just keep this one. Okay, so a lot of times you'll see me uh, tuning, and I'll pull my string like this. That's because sometimes the string will get caught in the nut right here. There's a slot right there. This is called the nut. And the string will get caught in the nut. And the tension between 
or the, yeah, I think that's what it's called, the tension between this side of the string and then between the tuner and the nut. There might be more tension or less tension here. So I pull the string and then I retune it. Now you'll notice that it's, it's a little flat. So I'll tune it back up again. Check my A string, I'm gonna pull it. It went flat again. Now, new strings, these aren't actually very new strings, but strings do stretch if they're fairly new. Here's my D string, I'm gonna pull it. And, okay, went flat. G string, it went a little flat. There, that's better. Pull it. It went a little flat. Pull it. And it's a little flat. So I'm evening out the tension. I'm pulling that string through that uh, slot in the nut right there. Now another thing I might do is check. Now this is a chromatic tuner. I've got it on chromatic mode. Some tuners uh, you have different modes, like you can put it on a guitar mode so it'll just do the E, A, D, G, B, E. Or you can do a half step down, you know, E flat, A flat, uh, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat, or something like that. Um, I like the chromatic mode because I can look at any note. So there's my E, there's my G, that looks pretty good. A, C, there's my D. I'm pushing down on the third fret. That one's a little flat. That one's a B flat. Or an A sharp. It says A sharp on the tuner. That one's a little flat. I don't know if you notice this, but over here on my right hand, a lot of times when I'm tuning, I've got my hand on the strings. That's because when I pluck a string, or like this, hear that? I'm just plucking my E string, letting all the strings, that note is still playing. It's because my A string, and my E string, and the other strings are vibrating with that overtone. See that? So I'll put my fingers on the strings as I'm plucking, and just pluck that one string and tune it. So I'll do this. I'll put my fingers like I'm going to finger pick. I put them on the strings like that. I've got four fingers and my thumb. I pluck it like this. I put my fingers on the strings. And then when I go to the A string, I'll do that. I'll pluck the A string with my thumb. And then put my, e, my thumb back on the E string like that. D string. Right here, I've got my thumb wedged between the E string and the A strings so that it doesn't play. So I will be playing one note at a time and not more than one note so that the other strings don't vibrate with the notes. So uh, that's important too. Okay, let's see. Is there anything else that I want to tell you at the moment? Well, sometimes when you play, now I'm going to play this C. Here's a C chord. I'm going to play that C right there and this C right here and listen to them. They sound pretty good. Let's check them. Now, look at that. That one looks a little sharp. See that? A little on the sharp side. Now, either I'm pushing down too hard or it, that fretted note is out of tune. Sometimes what I will do, let me look at it like this so I can see it better. Yep. So I'm going to pull it like I did before. There, that's back in tune. I'll let you see it. That sounds better. says in the comments, it's amazing to me that a loose low E 
or a change in humidity can make a significant difference in tuning. You are so right, Dean. I have... You can, see, you can see my face. I have a humidifying room. Hello, Orion. Orion Quest says hi. Hello, <laughs> welcome. I have a, humidifi uh, a humidifying room, a very small room that I put my guitars in. And what happens is that I will put a guitar in there to humidify it when I'm not using it. And uh, when I bring it out, two or three days later, if I've had it in a drier climate, my room is a little drier. It's probably 30% humidity in here. When I put it in the 45% humidity for a few days or longer, when I bring it back out, it's out of tune. You are so correct about that. Or vice versa. Okay. Also, heat and cold will change the strings. It's not so much the heat and the cold reacting on the strings as it is the wood of the guitar or the neck of the guitar. All right. That's about all I have to say for the moment about tuning. But secrets of tuning, you know, um, you'll notice that I have my classical guitar right here. And then back here on the, on the wall, I have my electric guitar and I have a bass guitar back there. Uh, I have another baby Taylor back there too. This is a Blue Ridge BR73. Every guitar is a little different. It really is. And if I have new strings or I have old strings, it's different. So um, you've got to get to know your guitars if you've got more than one and how they react with humidity, with temperature, uh, new strings or old strings or in-between strings. Um, over the years as I've played and... Uh, uh, you know, done gigs and things like that. I always find that new strings are better for gigs, and that's the best thing. Like, uh, I'll only play a gig maybe two days with strings, and then I'll change them again. Because after two days, and when I mean two days, I'm talking about anywhere from four hours to six or seven hours of playing, or maybe a little bit more. If I, if I play a gig that has four or five hours in the gig, then I might just change the strings for the next night because after I played on them for four, five, six, seven hours or something like that, it really depends on the humidity and things like that. But um, they start to get squirrely and not sound or sustain as well, right? They don't sustain as long and they don't tune as well. And when I'm in a gig, I need something that tunes very quickly, precisely, and will not break on me. That's important. Mm. Orion says... I'm learning a lot from you. Particularly enjoyed the Remember Me and So Far Away lessons. Very good. I like Remember Me. <laughs> Remember Me is its such a fun song. Uh, let's see. So Far Away. So Far Away. Oh, yeah, that, that song. That's a, good, that's a good song. Let's see. Orion says, do you use sweetened tunings? Let's see. I'm trying to figure out what sweetened tunings are. Um, is sweetened tunings where you, like, you detune something a little bit or that kind of thing? Is that what you're talking about? Because what I was just talking about, um, you know, taking the string and looking at it, like fretting the note and looking at the tuning. Now, sometimes when I'm playing in the key of C or the key of G, or the key of A or the key of E, E has five, uh, four sharps in it, and C has zero sharps and flats. So sometimes when I'm playing in the key of C, it sounds one way, and when I'm playing in the key of A or the key of E, um, then it sounds a different way. Now let me pull down my classical guitar just for a second. I'm gonna turn down the volume on this guitar, unplug, so give me just a moment. taking a little longer than I sometimes do on a, on a live stream. Sometimes I only like to go about 20 minutes, but we'll go just a little bit longer because of these questions here. 
this one is way out of tune. The only thing I've done with this guitar is to put it in the humidifying room. I didn't, when I pulled it out today, see that? That one's low. That one's low, but it's a pretty close. That one's low. G string is low. B string is low. E string is low. So they're basically low. So I'm going to tune it up. I'm going to, here. Let me show you my whole guitar so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Now these strings are pretty close to being in tune, so I don't have to do some of the radical things I talked about. Although I'm going to tune two times here. Okay, I'm going to pull these strings. Check my tuning again. Now when you talk about sweetened tunings, sweetened tunings I heard James Taylor talk about sweetened tunings on a video um, where he tunes a certain way. But, and I've tried that before, you know, tuning my guitar a certain way, but I'll tell you, guitars are all different, just like people are all different. And you want to... That's why I'm checking my third fret. A lot of times, I'll flatten this G string a little bit on this guitar to make sure that it's in tune. For some reason, this guitar f sounds better when the G string's a little flat. Let's try. That sounds pretty good. Let's try, um... Sounds pretty good. Now, I might play on a little bit and then check my tuning again. Uh, before I record, I usually check tunings quite a few times. And, uh, and then I record, and I try to really tune in. Um, what's the word that I want? I, I hone into that, you know, is it in tune? Now, if I'm going to be playing up... That song that I was just playing here. It's by Francisco Tarrega. When I'm up here. Oops. Oh, I forget how it goes. I have to look at my music a little bit. But anyway, I haven't practiced that this morning. Um... Sometimes if I'm playing up here, up high, and it doesn't quite sound right, it actually sounds pretty good. Sometimes I will tune specifically for certain portions of my, my guitar if I know I'm going to be in one spot. Uh, anyway, or if I'm going to be in one key. That's all I have to say. Let's see. He's got another question. Orion asks, how do you evaluate? Do the octaves have to be perfect? That's a good question. I was just talking about the C's. That's an octave. Two octaves, actually. No, I'm taking it back. It's one octave. When I'm playing a C chord. You know, the guitar is not a perfect instrument. It does not always play exactly in tune. And sometimes uh, there is, there are, what do you call it, uh, compromises that you need to do to make things sound well, sound good. 
for instance, that G note and the B note right there, or this G note and B note. If I'm playing this song. It's a song a friend of mine wrote. Because I'm using this note, that B, I make sure that those two notes sound really good. Because that's the beginning of it. It starts out like this. sure how to always um, answer that question, but yeah, octaves are important, but also certain intervals can be important too. AJ Nagar, Nagar, Hill, amazing. I'm not sure what Hill means, or maybe you're trying to say my name. Well, love you too. Thank you for being here. Appreciate you being here. Very good. Well, I'm going to go. I've got to hang out with uh, my supporters. I'm supposed to be there right now. If you're one of my supporters on Subscribestar or Patreon or you have made a donation over at uh, PayPal, you will get a notification from me and you will be able to meet me right after live streams. We hang out for a while. All right, we'll talk to you later. Thanks for being here. around.